right? I mean, yeah. to be perfect, you should have no, no uh, width to this. Well, then, that would save on materials. Yes, it would. In fact, you should point that out. Yeah, there you go. Here's my new invisible 600. Hi, John. Hi, how are you? Just to see you. And then the second one says that ye being grounded and rooted and grounded in love may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is breadth and length and depth and height. Now I can count and that's four dimensions. <laughs> uh, oh yes, I should mention, I think, my Armenian friend, Paul Donchian, T-O-N-C-H-I-A-N. P.S. Donchian opens door to a fair land of pure science as wire and cardboard models explain highest mathematics. And if you look at the right, it says enthralls thousands of Chicago. But Einstein was barred from exhibit at fair, lest crowds crush him and models. <laughs> I just want to step back 20 years, if I may, to Professor Cox's 75th birthday celebrations. And and I just want to tell you a little story. Um, there were, of course, all the people there <laughs> were students of Coxeter or grand students of Coxeter or maybe even great grand students of Coxeter. But they were all getting up saying how this man had been a great inspiration of their lives. Um, well, I just, you know, rather brashly thought I'd do something different. And when I stood up, I said, I, I was here to forgive Professor Coxeter um, for having tried to murder me. <laughs> and I tell the story, which actually has elements of the truth about it. Um, a long, long time ago, Professor Coxeter came to Cambridge and gave a lecture. Um, and I didn't realize at the time that that was his attempt to murder me. He chose for his weapon something that Agatha Christie never thought of, a mathematical problem. <laughs> and um, uh, obviously, I mean, what actually happened, I walked out of the lecture room and crossed the main road in Cambridge, and just as I was in the middle of the road, the solution hit me. <laughs> and it wasn't the only thing that hit me. <laughs>